Hey, good morning, happy new year, and welcome to today's finance committee meeting. My name is council member Daniel Drum, and I'm chair of this committee. We have been joined by council member Barry Gudenchik, council member Adrian Adams, council member Keith Powers, council member Jimmy Van Bramer, council member Andy Cohen, and council member Robert Cornegy, and I know other members are in the other room voting. Oh, and majority leader Lori Cumbo is here with us as well and the other members should be joining us shortly. Today we have two bid items on the agenda, which are intro 1226 and intro 1227. Intro 1226 would establish the Throgs Neck Business Improvement District in Council Member Jonai's district in the Bronx. The proposed district extends along both sides of East Tremont Avenue from Bruckner Boulevard to Miles Avenue. The proposed district is a low density residential area of 180 properties with substantial commercial overlay. The bid projects a first year budget of $340,000 in which it proposes to offer such things as maintenance and, and sanitation services, marketing and retail, uh, attraction services, and administration advocacy services. The maximum annual assessment of the bid as set by this law would be $3.4 million. Intro 1227 would extend the boundaries of the Hudson Square bid in Speaker Johnson's district, as well as increase the maximum annual assessment of the bid. The Hudson Square bid was first established in 2008, primarily to address issues presented by the area's increased commercial and residential popularity with its proximity to the Holland Tunnel. The bid is currently requesting that the council approve the following change to the district plan. One, an extension of the bid boundaries further west along Canal Street to West Street and further north from West Houston to Clarkson Street. And two, a $1,400,000 increase in its annual assessment from $2,500,000 to $3,900,000. On November 28, 2018, this committee held a public hearing to consider both Intro 1226 and Intro 1227, and we heard testimony in support of the bid's respective establishment and expansion. As required by law, that hearing closed without a vote, and the 30-day period began to allow property owners affected by the establishment or extension of the relevant bid to formally object to the proposed action. According to the city clerk, with whom these objections would be filed, one property owner filed a valid objection to the creation of the Throgs Neck bid during the 30-day period. For the Hudson Square bid, however, no property owners filed a valid objection to the expansion of the bid. Accordingly, the committee may now vote in favor of, of intro 1226 and intro 1227 if we can answer the following four questions in the affirmative. One, were all notices of hearings for all hearings required to be held published and mailed so as, as, as so required by law and otherwise sufficient? Two, does all the real property within the district's boundaries benefit from the establishment or expansion of the district except as otherwise provided by the law? Three, is all real property benefited by the district included within the district? And four, is the establishment or expansion of the district in the best interest of the public? Representatives from the Department of Small and Business Services are here to testify to help us answer those questions on the two bid items. Uh, SBS, please come up and my counsel will swear you in. And we are joined now by Michael Blaze Backer uh, from the Small Business Services. Do you affirm that your testimony will be truthful to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? Yes, I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Drum and members of the Finance Committee. I'm Michael Blaze Backer, Deputy Commissioner for Neighborhood Development at the Department of Small Business Services. Um, today, I would like to testify in regards to both bid-related items on the agenda today. Um, and first, I will report on the result of the period for filing objections with the City Clerk against the proposed establishment of the Throgs Neck Business Improvement District. As required by law, the Throgs Neck Steering Committee mailed the summary of the City Council resolution to the following parties. To each owner of real property within the proposed district at the address shown on the latest city assessment roll, to such other persons as are registered with the city to receive tax bills concerning real property within the district, and to tenants of each building within the proposed district. Furthermore, SBS arranged for the publication of a copy of the summary of the resolution at least once in the city record. 
at the conclusion of the objection period 5 p.m. on December 31st, 2018, and taking into consideration any objections postmarked by that date, one ballot ob objection representing less than 1% of the total assessed value was filed with the city clerk for properties within the district. Additionally, one invalid objection was filed with the city clerk for a property within the district. This level of objection is within our acceptable threshold needed to advance the bill for a favorable consideration by the full city council. The Department of Small Business Services supports the establishment of the proposed Throgs Neck bid. In our judgment, the proposed bid will improve the quality of life and business conditions within the Throgs Neck district. Uh, secondly, I would also like to report on the result of the period for filing objections with the city clerk against the proposed expansion of the Hudson Square Business Improvement District. As required by law, the Hudson Square Bid Expansion Steering Committee mailed the summary of the City Council resolution to the following parties. To each owner of real property within the existing district and proposed expansion at the address shown at the latest city assessment roll. To such other persons as are registered with the city to receive tax bills concerning real property within the existing district and the proposed expansion. And to tenants of each building within the existing district and the proposed expansion area. Additionally, the Hudson Square bid published a notice of the public hearing at least once in a local newspaper having general circulation in the district, specifying the time when and the place where the hearing would be held, and stating the increase proposed and the maximum amount to be expended annually. Furthermore, SBS arranged for the publication of a copy of the summary of the resolution at least once in the city record. At the conclusion of the objection period at 5 p.m. on December 31st, 2018, and taking into consideration any objections postmarked by that date, no objections were filed with the city clerk. The Department of Small Business Services supports the expansion of the Hudson Square bid. In our judgment, it will improve quality of life and business conditions in the Hudson Square District. At this time, I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you very much. I want to say we've been joined by Council Member Francisco Moya. And um, I believe with that, we're going to ask our committee clerk, Billy Martin, to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance. Items are coupled. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Cohen. Cornegie. Aye. Cumbo. I vote aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Adams. Aye. Moya. Aye. Powers. Aye. Matteo. Aye. By a vote of nine in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee. Okay, thank you very much. And with that, we're going to keep the vote open for another 10 minutes. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for coming in.